Alright guys, I'm back. Hope y'all are doing well. We're gonna continue the lemonade war today and we're gonna read chapter seven, but first let's just do a quick review on chapter six. Chapter six, remember, was called underselling, and that is where Jesse learned that Evan and his group of friends, he had three of his friends with him, they were underselling the lemonade. And so they were only charging the kids 10 cents per cup instead of the 50 cents that Jesse was charging, Jesse and Megan. So everybody was going for the cheap lemonade, especially for their kids. And Jesse and Megan weren't getting people in their, at their stand. Um, Jesse and Megan sure tried. Remember, they, they kind of created like a party atmosphere. And so they had um, music and they had chips and then mom started bringing their kids and had the sprinklers going and it was really kind of like a party. But people weren't buying lemonade so they weren't spending the money. So it really didn't help them at all. So that's pretty much where we left off. So we're gonna look at chapter seven today and this one is called Location, Location, Location. So there we go, Location, Location, Location. <clears throat> location, real estate term that refers to the position of a piece of real estate as it relates to the value of that real estate. So location is very important when you're looking at buying and selling. All right, Evan was in trouble. So far, he'd earned $47.11, which was more money than he'd ever had in his whole life. But today was Friday. There were only three days left, three days to beat Jesse. He needed to earn almost $53 to win the bet. And that meant each day he had to earn, look, Evan tried to do the math in his head. 53 divided by three, no, 53 divided by three. His brain spun like a top. He did not know where to begin. He went to his desk, pulled out a piece of paper, his basketball schedule from last winter, and flipped it over to the back. He found the stub of a pencil in his bottom desk drawer and on the paper he wrote. 53 divided by three equals. He stared and stared at the equation on the page. The number 53 was just too big. He didn't know how to do it. Jesse would know how, he muttered, scribbling hard on the page. Jesse could do long division. Jesse had her multiplication facts memorized all the way up to 14 times 14. Jesse would look at a problem like this and just do it in her head. Snap like that. Evan felt his mouth getting tight, his fingers gripping the pencil too hard as he scribbled a dark storm cloud on the page. His math papers from school were always covered in big X's. Nobody else got as many X's as he did. Nobody. Draw a picture, Mrs. DeFazo's voice floated in his head. She had always reminded him to draw a picture when he couldn't figure out how to start a math problem. But a picture of what? He asked in his head, anything, came the answer. Anything? Yes, anything, as long as there are 53 of them. Dollar signs. Evan decided to draw dollar signs. He started to draw three rows of dollar signs. One, two, three, he counted as he drew. Four, five, six, he drew. So this is how we started. Let's see if he gets to the right answer. By the time he reached 53, his page looked like this. Whoa, that's a lot. There were 17 dollar signs in each row. And then those two extra dollar signs left over, Evan drew a ring around those two extras. 17 dollar signs and two left over. Evan stared at the picture for a long time. He wrote, Friday next to the first row, Saturday next to the second row, and Sunday next to the third row. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So now his paper looked like that. Evan looked at the picture. It started to make sense. He needed to make $17 on Friday, $17 on Saturday, and $17 on Sunday. Somewhere over the three days, he needed to make two extra bucks in order to earn $53 by Sunday evening. Evan felt his heart jump in his chest. He had done it. He had figured out 53 divided by three. That was a fourth grade math problem. That was fourth grade math. And he hadn't even started fourth grade and no one had helped him. Not mom, not grandma, not Jesse. He did it all by himself. It was like shooting the winning basket in double overtime. He hadn't felt this good since the lemonade war had begun. But $17 a day? How was he gonna do that? 
Yesterday, he made $45, but that was because he had help and free supplies from his friends. They weren't gonna wanna run a lemonade stand every day, especially on the last days of summer vacation. He needed a plan, something that would guarantee good sales. The weather was holding out, that was for sure. It was gonna hit 95 degrees today, a real scorcher. People would be thirsty, all right. Evan closed his eyes and imagined a crowd of thirsty people all waving dollar bills at him. Now, where was he gonna find a lot of thirsty people with money to spend? An idea popped into his head. Yep, it was perfect. He just needed to find something with wheels to get him there. It took Evan half an hour to drag his loaded wagon to the town center, a distance he usually traveled in less than five minutes by bike. But once he was there, he knew it was worth it. It was lunchtime and the shaded benches on the town green were filled with people sprawling in the heat. Workers from the nearby stores on their half hour lunch breaks, moms out with their kids, old people who didn't want to be cooped up in their houses all day, high school kids on skateboards slooshed by, preschoolers climbed in the life-size sculpture of a circle of children playing ring around the rosy. Dogs laid under the trees, their tongues hanging out, panting. Evan surveyed the scene and picked a spot right in the center of the green where all the paths met. Anyone walking across the green would have to pass his lemonade stand. And who could resist lemonade on a hot day like today? But first he wheeled his wagon off to the side, parking it halfway under a huge tree. Then he crossed the street and walked in to the Big Dipper. The frozen air felt good on his skin. It was like getting dunked in a vat of just melted ice cream. And the smells, mmm. A mix of vanilla, chocolate, coconut, caramel, and bubble gum. He looked at the tubs of ice cream all in a row, carefully protected behind the pane of glass. The money in his pocket tingled. He had plenty of money left over after buying five cans of frozen lemonade mix with his earnings from yesterday. What would it hurt to buy just one cone or a milkshake or maybe both? Can I help you? Asked the woman behind the counter. Uh, yeah, said Evan. He stuck his hand in his pocket and felt all that money. Bills and coins ruffled between his fingers. Money was meant to be spent. So why not spend just a little? I, um, uh, mm, Evan could just imagine how good that ice cream would feel sliding down his throat, creamy, sweet, like cold, golden deliciousness. He let his mind float as he gazed at the swirly buckets of ice cream. The sound of laughter brought him back to the earth in a hurry. He looked around. It was just some girls he didn't know at the water fountain, but it had sounded like Megan. Can you please tell me how much a glass of lemonade costs? Sure, three dollars, said the woman. Really, said Evan? That much? How big's the cup? The woman pulled a plastic cup off the stack and held it up. It wasn't much bigger than the eight ounce cup that Evan had in his wagon. Wow, three bucks? That's a lot, said Evan. Well, thanks anyway, and he started to walk out the door. Hey, said the woman, pointing to the ice cream case. I'm allowed to give you a taste for free. Really, said Evan? Then, uh, well, could I taste the strawberry slam? The woman handed him a tiny plastic spoon with three licks worth of pink ice cream on it. Evan swallowed it all in one gulp. Ah. Back outside, he got to work. First, he filled his pitchers with water from the drinking fountain. Then, he stirred in the mix. Then, he pulled out the big blue marker and he wrote on a piece of paper, $2 per cup, best price in town. He'd barely finished setting up when the customers started lining up and they didn't stop. For a full hour, he poured lemonade. The world is a thirsty place, he thought, as he nearly emptied his fourth pitcher of the day. And I am the lemonade king. Later, Evan would think of something his grandma said. Pride goeth before the fall. It might not end well for him. When Evan looked up, there was Officer Ken, his hands on his hips, looking down on him. Evan gulped. He stared at the big holstered gun strapped onto Officer Ken's belt. Hello, said Officer Ken, not smiling. Hi, said Evan. Officer Ken did the bike rodeo every year at Evan's school. He was also the cop who had shown up last fall when there was a hurt goose on the recess field. 
Officer Ken was always smiling. Why isn't he smiling now? Evan wondered. Uh, do you have a permit? Officer Ken asked. He had a very deep voice, even when he talked quietly, like he did now. You mean like a bike permit? That's what the rodeo was all about. If they passed the rodeo, the third graders got their bike permits, which meant they were allowed to ride to school. No, I mean like a permit to sell food and beverages in a public space. You need to get a permit from the town hall and pay a fee for the privilege. Pay the town hall to run a lemonade stand? Was he kidding? Evan looked at Officer Ken's face. He did not look like he was kidding. Oh, uh, I, I didn't know I needed one, said Evan. Sorry, friend. I'm gonna have to shut you down. It's the law, said Officer Ken. But, 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 but there are three lemonade stands all over town, said Evan. He thought of Jesse and Megan's lemonade stand. When he'd wheeled by with his wagon more than an hour ago, their stand looked like a beehive with kids crowding around. He had read the sign over there. Free face painting, nail polishing, hair braiding. What a gimmick. But it sure looked like it was working. You know, said Evan, there's a stand on Damon Road right now. You should go bust them. Officer Ken smiled. We tend to look the other way when it's in a residential neighborhood. But right here on the town green, we have to enforce the law. Otherwise, we'd have some someone selling something every two feet. But there had to be some way to convince Officer Ken. How could Evan make him understand? You see, I have this little sister, and we've got a we have a competition going to see who can sell the most lemonade. And I have to win because she's he couldn't explain the rest about fourth grade and how embarrassed he was to be in the same class as his kid sister and how it made him feel like a great big loser. Evan looked up at Officer Ken. Officer Ken looked down on Evan. It was like Officer Ken was wearing a mask, a no smiling mask. I'm not your buddy mask. Then Officer Ken shook his head and smiled and the mask fell off. I have a little sister too, he said. Love her to death now, but when we were kids, whoo we. Then the mask came back and Officer Ken looked right at Evan for 10 very stern seconds. Tell you what, said Officer Ken, I do have to shut you down. It's the law. But before I do, I'll buy one glass of lemonade. How's that sound? Evan's face fell. Sure, he said, without enthusiasm. He poured an extra tall cup and gave it to the policeman. Officer Ken reached into his pocket and handed Evan a $5 bill. Keep the change, he said a contribution to the Big Brother Fund. Now, go clean up your things and don't leave any litter behind. He lifted his cup in a toast as he walked away. Evan watched him go. Wow, he thought. I just sold the most expensive cup of lemonade in town. Evan stared at the $5 bill in his hand. It was funny. Two days ago, he would have felt as rich as a king to have that money in his hands. It was enough to buy two slices of pizza and a soda with his friends. It was enough to rent a video and have a late night at someone's house. It was enough to buy a whole bag full of his favorite candy mix at the CVS. Two days ago, he would have been jumping for joy. Now he just looked at the $5 and thought, it's nothing. Compared to the $100 he needed to win the war, $5, it was nothing. He felt somehow that he'd been robbed of something. Maybe the happiness he should have had the feeling. He loaded everything from his stand into the wagon, making sure he didn't leave a scrap of litter behind. He still had a glass full of lemonade left in one pitcher, not to mention another whole pitcher already mixed up and unsold, so he poured himself a full cup. Then, before beginning the long, hot haul back to his house, he found an empty spot on a shaded bench and pulled his ear earnings out of his pocket. He counted once, he counted twice, very slowly. He had made $65. The cups and the lemonade had cost him $9. When he added in his earnings from Wednesday and Thursday, he had $103.11. Now that's enough, he thought. All right, that's the end of chapter seven. Bye guys.